don't know about you guys, but my first crush was with a computer. It was an IBM 186. Um, during that time, I was also into a lot of computer gaming, and I was the only female in the internet cafes. And I was really, really loving Quake and Doom. Um, on the side, I was studying as a hobby, C++ and VBA. Now I'm grown up, but I'm still geeky, and my latest passion is my red electric scooter. Uh, but my biggest passion in life is analytics. I live it, I breathe it, and I just privately and professionally, it's my dream. This is what I live for. And I have a long background in the field uh, from several high-tech companies and also at Nike, HQ Holland, and currently I'm head of analytics at ICA. Um, I'm real proud about a lot of things in life, and at the moment, I'm super proud about my seven-year-old. He's already into programming. My five-and-a-half-year-old, he's a killer Lego builder, and my four-year-old, he inherited my love for whipped cream. So this is Daniel. Please meet my best friend at work. Tell us about you. Yes, and I think yeah, when you were playing Doom and Quake, I was actually playing Ice Climber on my 8 bits Nintendo. And uh, I actually bought a Nintendo this Christmas, this retro one for my, for my two daughters. Uh, I was playing this uh, Donkey Kong, and my uh, youngest girl said, oh, Dad, is, this, is it really supposed to sound like this? <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I think even though we don't share maybe the same computer games, we do share the passion for analytics and data. And the mice started very early. I think already in the third grade, I, uh, I remember me and my friend, we used to sneak away and hide under the teacher's desk during the, the uh, school breaks and with our math books. Uh, and I think that uh, actually later led to that I majored in uh, quantum physics and also did several years of research within that area dealing with huge amount of data, very, very complex algorithms. Uh, but the last three years, I've been working at ICA, and I'm being the director then for the data analytics and technology area. And I think here I have really found my place. Here I get the opportunity to work with huge amount of data about all of you guys uh, and with the products that we have. And uh, actually, it's, it's the fun thing is that it's also really tangible. I mean, it's, you can relate to it. Uh, a banana is a banana, right? Uh, but it's also a very fun thing is that uh, or what makes me exciting is that I can really make a difference on the actual the bottom line of the company. And of course, to work with very, uh, great colleagues like uh, Carolina. And I also had also the opportunity or the good fortune to be part of the journey we're going to describe today from, from the start or from the beginning. But first, just a few facts about uh, ICA. I think most of you no Zika, so raise your hands, anyone that has not done some shopping at Ica the last month. Uh, all right, but uh, at least thanks to you, not the one that raised your hands. Uh, Ica do have a market share of uh, 36%, and we do have a, a yearly revenue of uh, more than 82 billion Swedish crowns. Uh, but it's also a kind of a unique setup that we have at Ica. We have more than 1,300 privately owned uh, store owners. So all the stores Ica is privately owned, and uh, that is the kind of um, the model, or we call it the the Ica idea, and and uh, that is quite a new unique one. And uh, we call it Fria Handla in Samverkan in Swedish. It is something that we are celebrating this idea for 100 years at the anniversary last year, and but now we're looking 100 years ahead, and of course we want to stay number one in Sweden or continue to stay number one. And here, data and analytics will play a, a really crucial role. So imagine it's uh, March 2017. At that point in ICA, our analysts were based in silos. The data was situated in silos. We didn't have really work ways of working. It was like within the silos, there was one kind of ways of working. We didn't really commune between. There was no clear strategy or vision for analytics. Um, when it comes to the analysts, they were mainly focusing on pulling data and making extracts. And um, there was not about the future and looking, looking at more complex uh, pro purpose of the analysts. So we said, basically, enough. That's it. Let's stop talking about becoming a data-driven organization. Let's do it. Let's start the journey. Let's do it for real. And let's increase the knowledge at the business that the business can step into the data and know what they're actually basing their decisions on. So our analysts can focus on more advanced methods and make an exit. 
So this subject is what we're going to take you through today and talk more about. Yeah, and the topic, it, uh, the topic then, empowering an organization with self-service analytics. And here I would really like to stress the word uh, empowering, because that is what it's all about, to empower, empower new people to take more data-driven decisions. And the self-service analytics is the mean, it's considered the mean to take us there uh, to the goal. And uh, here, Tableau, uh, the Tableau tool that we're using at IKEA has also been a, an enabler to really cater for this change when it comes to uh, implementing self-service uh, analytics. And uh, also we want to thank the, uh, Tableau for inviting us here today to uh, share with you as well this, the journey that we have taken. Um, and I think, I believe that there's three things that makes uh, our journey successful. And the, one, the first one was we did this from an enterprise perspective from the early start. We involved all the business units within the company to be part of the journey from, from the, uh, day one. That's one thing. The other one is that we did it extremely close together. The IT and the data analytic community worked hand by hand and we had shared a common goal in this journey. And thirdly, uh, throughout the whole journey, we uh, continuously um, focused on all three change aspects when it comes to the people, the technology and the data, and the process. So that is what we want to share with you today, some key takeaways in each of these uh, three aspects. And we hope that you, you will find, find it inspiring and uh, perhaps helpful as well on your, uh, your journey that you're undertaking or that you have already started. Um, and please feel free to ask questions and, and we're happy to answer them at the end of this presentation. Yeah. So let's start with people. We believe that everything starts with the motivation from the people. If you don't have them aboard, you won't come anywhere. So we decided to, to combine uh, people into three different groups, depending on common interests. Uh, and we uh, divide them into IT, analysts, and business. Uh, there's, of course, a lot of similarities within these groups, of course. Uh, for example, the need of a lot of education and also solid processes and structure. Because without the processes, it's quite scary to get into this change. And if we dive into key takeaways from the IT side, uh, I don't know about you guys, but I assume that you also have quite complex data landscapes. We do. It's really tricky. And that means also it's scary to let people in to the data, in this case for IT to let go of the control. And that wasn't the easiest at the beginning. Uh, but what we did was focusing on uh, the purpose and repeating the purpose. Why are we doing this? And uh, the reasoning behind it, and also all the time cover it with solid process and the structure. So uh, they, they felt safe um, during this uh, period. So key takeaways from IT, let go, dare to re let go of the control. Um, if they let go of control, it also means that someone needs to pick up the control. So in this case, it was the analyst. And also from that perspective, it was quite scary because it's a big responsibility to take on the data. So that went kind of on a roller coaster like that, especially me in the beginning. I thought like, okay, whoa, this is intense. But the thing is, with education and processes, it, it was quite safe anyway to know the reasoning why we did this. And also to remember that the reason why we do this is so our analysts can actually focus on what they're meant to do and to do much more value-added tasks. Uh, and what we did also for the analyst was to focus on a really strong community, to have a lot of inspiring sessions. We had every week, we had sessions, we had um, Tableau Tuesday lunches. For example, we had cafes, we had inspiration sessions and demos, uh, which we where we put all the analysts together and also combine with IT people. And the last group is the business. The business is the ones that need to make, in some ways, the biggest transition because they need to let go of the fright of data because they're usually scared of data. I don't know if you experienced this, the fright of just a pivot table. It, people think it's scary. So this is even scarier to go into a system and to, like, this is the truth. I'm, I'm seeing this, these numbers. I need to stand up for it. It's not an analyst telling me this is the truth. So that was scary. And the approach we took on there is that uh, we put the uh, analyst among the business. We set them in the landscape, close to them, so they're always there to support. And we also worked a lot of their self-esteem to say that they can do it and we believe in them and to build them up and to motivate them to do this. Uh, and to let go of the, let the analyst go to focus on more value-added tasks that could serve them in the long run. Tell us more about the data and tech aspect. Yeah, exactly. And when it comes to the technology and data, I just want to give you some kind of 
ball figures here, so give you an idea of the complexity and the sizing of the environment at ICA. Uh, we do have a huge amount of transactions every day, and mainly the point of sales transaction from all the customers, more than 60 millions. Uh, we also have thousands of uh, different type of users uh, in our systems uh, at current time. And of course, I think as many of you as well, we share that larger companies, we do have also kind of a, a legacy when it comes to a lot of different systems. And we do have the same at ICA. And uh, we do have all from Tableau, SAS, Cloudera, Oracle, Hadoop. Uh, so that also adds into our complexity. But when it comes to kind of some key takes away here, I think from a technology point of view, the most important, I think, is to consider the, the performance. Uh, and uh, when it comes to when you have so much data um, and the different type of users, that is something very important to consider. And I think that when, uh, when you're working with Tableau, for example, working with extracts in Tableau, I mean, that gives you great performance. On the other hand, that is not, you, you do want to leverage on the existing data structure that you already have in your data layers and semantic layers, etc especially if you want to roll it out in an, an enterprise perspective. So uh, here you need to consider that Tableau will not solve your underlying performance issues that you have in your data structure. So that you need to consider. And I think that was a challenge that we had. We discovered that we actually, due to the fact that our underlying data warehouse and so on did not have enough performance, we were forced to do a lot of extracts and we actually did a lot of double non-added value work which both slows, slowed us down and uh, also then kept a, quite a dependency to the IT resources during this journey. Um, so one thing we did to try to mitigate that and uh, was to focus a lot also on the workbook designs. When you're creating the workbooks, uh, you need to really understand how will these workbooks or dashboards be used uh, in order to minimize the need to for large extracts and be able to have live feeds directly to your data warehouses and uh, the structure that you already have built up. So I think that is two very important things. Consider your, your performance at the end that you have today. You might need some type of in-memory technology on top of what you have in order to get the right performance as well. Uh, consider the workbook design is really crucial. Bad design could, it doesn't matter what performance you have. Um, so the other one is the data strategy. Uh, of course, to be able to uh, make the data available for the data analyst to work in uh, within Tableau. And I think here you should consider really to have a clear strategy from start to understand, okay, what larger data sets or common data sets uh, need to be available uh, at the beginning for the broader audience, for a broader set of uh, analysts as well for different type of use cases. Uh, you will, anyway, you will be a need to have to add new data or specific data for certain use cases. But there are quite a lot of common data that, uh, that you pretty much know already that this is what everybody uses or this has been used for such multiple use cases. And that should be available from, from start. Um, when it comes to the process then, uh, key uh, takeaways here. One was the efficiency. One really important uh, thing when we went into this journey was to have as efficient process as possible for the data analyst to speed up the process to really get, uh, get out a lot of value from, from the use cases. So that was something that we focused a lot on. And the way we did it was that we designed the process as we went along. Uh, as we implemented use case by use case, we iteratively together with the IT, with the data analyst community, with the business, added to the process. And there were two things that was very important there. It was one, we avoided to have unnecessary checkpoints, process steps uh, that would slow us down. Secondly, it was also very obvious for everyone that was involved the reason why these different process steps needed to be there, uh, which also meant that they, they also adhered to this process later on. So that was one thing. On the other hand, of this, is, of course, speed is one thing. The other one is the control, and Carolina mentioned that uh, before as well. And instead of here as well, instead of having multiple checkpoints and very heavy data governance around all this, uh, we also chose here to focus a lot on education. Uh, we did have identified, uh, selected uh, local data managers, which we trained, had some more extensive training. 
uh, both on the tools, etc., itself, but uh, also mainly on the responsibilities, like GDPR, etc. Okay, what is the responsibility when I'm now owning this, this dashboard or this report or whatever that, that the business is going to use? But what does it mean? So uh, I think by that way, we also try to minimize and make the data governance as light as possible, still having control. And secondly, we also introduced uh, a process for certification of the data where IT was involved, that we could certify that certain data sets or KPIs or whatever were certified, meaning that it was able to be spread across the enterprise, even though the ownership state still lied within the data analytic community and not centralized by IT, we were all kind of felt that we, we had both had the control of letting this go. Um, and we did also have uh, introduced something called a data catalog, where we, uh, where we implemented or where we uh, stored or described the different data sets, KPIs, and the ownership of those. So it should be also readily available for, for a broader community. Yes, yeah, so now everybody may be wondering then, what happened next? <laughs> so how did it go? It actually went great. We're so proud of this journey. It happened quite quickly, and we did it together. Uh, we never worked so close between the business and Listen IT before, and we're super proud about that journey, and we're actually ramping up that, uh, that muscle now uh, and continuing to work this way, where we need to be together to have the, like, the, the most power to do it together. Um, as you can see here, this is just a sample. So we moved away from really nice Excels into basic uh, dashboards, uh, into more complex dashboards. We're still learning, and we're still getting deeper into it, but it's a transition of about a year. So we're really proud of this journey. Um, and the, the, I think the biggest proof is that our analysts today, they barely get any ad hoc requests. Before, they were overloaded. That was like the main task, to sit with extracts and just pull data and explain. We barely get any. So that's a super, like a, such a big proof that we accomplished something here. And also, when the business asks us questions, it's more complex questions. It's not, OK, I need that number. It's more about, where do I find this? Or how do I prepare that? Or this data set, why and how? So we see there's a, there's a maturity there. So that's a big proof that we did something right. And we have about 1,500 unique users at the moment, only in Tableau. We have other systems also, but only in Tableau, 1,500. And uh, about 370 unique users every week. And we published about 200 workbooks and dashboards uh, during this time, and they're all active. Uh, so we're really ramping up quickly. And one of the proof also that this journey was so successful is that ICA has seen the possibility here, and that we decided to invest. This is going to be one of our focus areas for the future now, the coming years at ICA. And we're ramping up in this muscle here with data and analytics. Uh, and we're going to then, as I said in the beginning, we're going to continue working even closer in the future, actually. So it's a success story that continues, uh, basically. And I can just hint, 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 say that we're kind of hiring, just saying. So uh, to summarize what we talked about today, our recommendations during this few 20 minutes is we took on an enterprise, uh, enterprise, uh, enterprise approach from the beginning uh, that was really successful for us. We did it together. It was all about the partnership, not they and we and I. It was us. We did it together. That's really a power that you should use. Uh, we focused on um, the, the technology and why we did this. Uh, and basically, we, we looked at the approaches of people, process, data, and technology. But the main focus, the key here, was the people. That's really a key takeaway for us. So to finish everything off, what we talked about today is all about the people and the partnership, uh, basically, and all, a lot about gold. And I think all of you know when I say a lot of gold, I mean data. That's like the fuel that, what, that we, I think most of us are most passionate about, to have a lot of data. So it's all about that and having the partnership and strength together to do this. And we hope you got some insights and inspiration. After.